something called triangle law of vector addition where both the vectors are acting at that common point i have drawn the diagonal scalar addition so intensely and simplified parallelogram law this is the most commonly used method to add two vectors will be the result after adding vector a and b hello students this is sd sir from the temple of excellence vidyashram pre university college now continuing my discussion on motion in a plane where yesterday we studied a very important concept called scalars and vectors we told a scalar is a physical quantity that is explained only using magnitudes and is independent of direction whereas vector is described using both magnitude and direction and we also studied the different types of vectors like zero vector unit vector equal vectors and negative of a vector now we start studying a very important concept something called addition of vectors sir high school allo maadidivi lower classes allo maadidivi idenu do addition aston significant ah yes now if suppose i consider the addition of two scalars 1 plus 2 very evidently you say the answer is 3 yes to simple alwa addition of two scalars suppose i consider 2 plus 4 you say 6 kargat ra gutidira scalar addition so intensely and simplified but now if i ask you what is vector a plus vector b can i add two vectors as i did the scalars no what is the reason while adding two vectors i may be able to add the magnitudes but what about directions we told a vector is a quantity which is specified by both magnitude as well as direction evidently i can add the magnitudes but i should also look for a solution where i have to add two directions for which we formulate two laws and the first one is called the triangle law of vector addition very important something called triangle law of vector addition the law says if two vectors are represented 
if you are representing any two vectors both in magnitude and direction how by the two sides of a triangle taken in order quite interesting follow we are representing two vectors both in magnitude and direction how by two sides of a triangle taken in order which means follow carefully i consider a directed line segment ab i am considering a directed line segment ab which represents vector a first vector a i am representing by the directed line segment length of this ab gives me the magnitude arrow gives me the direction another line segment bc which represents another vector b so i am representing two vectors vector a and vector b through the sides of a triangle now i have to add these vectors or in vector notion we say i have to find the resultant of these two vectors what will be the result after adding vector a and b for that the resultant is represented by the third side of the triangle third side of the triangle taken in reverse order yen idu third side now i want the third side so join ac this third side is giving me the resultant which is the sum of vector a and vector b so vector a plus vector b is vector r which is the resultant and we reverse order ready a to b this was the direction b to c this was the direction i should have taken c to a in this direction no resultant is given by a to c which is the reverse direction and this method is also called head to tail method why am i calling this as head to tail head of the triangle is joined to the tail a is the head initial point c is the tail resultant head to tail and this is called triangle law of vector addition which says any two vectors we are representing by two sides of a triangle and these sides are taken in order but what about the sum of these two vectors the so called resultant of vector a and b 
it is represented by the third side of the triangle where the third side is taken in the reverse order and this is also called head to tail method of vector addition. The second one, this is the most important law, what we call parallelogram law of vector addition. Modalne de no we triangle law. Ige no tidivi parallelogram law. This is the most commonly used method to add two vectors. In your second PUC electrostatics alternating current, wherever I have to find the resultant of two vectors, the technique that is commonly employed is the parallelogram law, which says if two vectors are represented both in magnitude and direction by the two adjacent sides of a parallelogram. So I consider a directed line segment AB which represents one vector what I call as A. Another line segment AD which represents vector B. AB and AD are the adjacent sides. If you observe the diagram, the most important thing is both the vectors act at a common point. So when two vectors act at a common point, if you want to find their resultant, if you want to find their sum, parallelogram law has to be used. Now I construct the parallelogram. A, B, C, D. And what is the most important thing? Diagonal. And this diagonal gives me the resultant of vector A and vector B. So AC is equal to R. So according to parallelogram law, the sum of any two vectors which act at a common point is given by the diagonal of a parallelogram which is drawn from the common point of application where both the vectors are acting at that common point I have drawn the diagonal. So this is the parallelogram law of vector addition. So very clearly you can see now both triangle law as well as parallelogram law he efficiently teaches us how to add the directions also therefore they are commonly employed for vector addition now we will come to the properties of vector addition very important for your second puc math the first property says Vector addition is always commutative. Please know, vector addition is always commutative. That is A plus B equals B plus E. Vector addition 
is always associative vector a plus vector b plus c equals vector a plus vector b plus c so in nature vector addition somewhat follows the same properties it is commutative as well as associative when the negative of a vector is added to a given vector the resultant vector is a null vector you are adding negative of a vector minus vector a to vector a then the resultant vector is a null vector a plus minus a is a zero vector so minimum of two vectors are required to get a resultant as zero vector a zero vector also comes into picture when you multiply a vector with a scale or zero so these are the properties of vector addition in my next session we go over with the subtraction multiplication and resolution of vectors until then have a look enjoy have a fine time thank you